different types of storage mode. These are the four different types of storage mode. Import uh, storage mode, direct query storage mode, and uh, live connection storage mode, and dual storage mode. The import and direct already we discussed some extent, right? So in the case of import mode, the data gets imported uh, and stored in your Power BI SIM memory. For example, you are loading an Excel file data into your Power BI desktop. What happens is the data get loaded in your Power BI desktop itself. In the sense, the data gets loaded, the Power BI is in memory. Anything in memory, the, the performance is pretty faster. What do you mean by in memory? For example, if I ask you your mom's phone number, mobile phone number, you can tell instantly because that is there in your memory. If I ask your uh, driver's, car driver's contact number, or if I ask your mate's contact number, so you need to check your mobile phone and then you need to tell, right? Because you don't remember it on top of your head. In that case, what happens is uh, you need to go and check your mobile phone about your you know, driver number and then you need to give it to your friend. It takes, there is a delay here. But if I ask your mother's contact number, it is there in your brain, you can tell instantly. So anything in memory, the performance is faster, okay? This is simple analogy, okay? So the import mode, uh, is nothing but in memory. The data will get loaded in memory behind the scene. It enables complex data transformation and modeling. Which one? The import mode. And you know, this, this is one of the uh, advantages of using import mode. You can use other advantages. You can use any type of data in import mode, whether it's a SQL Server, Oracle, or Dataverse, be it any source system ap apart from the Excel or JSON or other flat files. Okay. So you can use the import mode for any type of the file and you can upload any type of the data in import mode. And also you can perform any data transformation once you load the data in import mode. You can make changes to your data model, everything. If you want to delete a column, if you want to rename a column, and if you want to, to drop the relationship and uh, create additional relationship, everything is possible with import mode. The disadvantage, the flip side of import mode is data is not real time. Okay, the data is not real time. For example, you have imported the data from your SQL server table. For example, you have the customer table available in your SQL server. What happened in your Power BI? You have imported this table import mode okay you use the import mode and the customer table conserve let's assume that you know let's say, you know you have uh, 100,000 customers are there so once you import this if you use the import mode instead of direct mode, if you use import mode all the 100 100,000 100k customers will get loaded in memory in your power bi desktop and this one you imported it let's you know one week back Listen very carefully. One week back, you have imported the customer table from your SQL server using import mode. So one week back, right? So after you know, after this, let's you know every day you know new customers are also purchasing. It's not that you know only hundred thousand customers, you know they you have it only they purchase it from you. Okay, it's not like that. Every day, new new customers can come. Listen, after one week, right? You have uh, five hundred, you know, five hundred two new customers. These five hundred new customers, it will not be there, you know, today. If you see in today's uh, data, which you loaded in your Power BI desktop, right? These five hundred new customers after one week, right? What new customers they purchased? That new customer data will not be available. Okay. Hence, there is no sync up here, but you can schedule the data refresh. Okay. So, in this case, to make your uh, data that in the customer data, the customer data up to date in your Power BI desktop, you need to refresh the data. Okay. You need to schedule the data refresh. This is one of the uh, flip side of using the import mode. Okay. It requires data refresh. You need to set up the data refresh, everything. You cannot access the data in real time. Supposing you are using a direct query mode. Instead of import mode, you are using direct query mode. So what will happen is, 
So whenever um, you, let's say, in your Power Bay report file, right, you have the column chart, something like, let's say, you know, each uh, rectangle shows uh, this is a north region, south region, southeast region, west region, east region, and so on. Here you have the sales. The sales and region, they assume that, you know, it comes from your uh, SQL server. Okay, the, these two data are available in SQL server. You did not import these two because the sales table kinds of huge volume of data to use the direct query mode so right so in that case also right in your report you have the slicer here the user selected uh, the north and south region what will happen you know, each time when you make changes here in your slicer the power bi will read the data directly from your sql server customer table okay hence it doesn't require the direct query mode doesn't require data refresh okay so in this case uh, they, right in this case whenever the user right they want to see north and south region alone right so it goes and you know ask the sql hey show me the north and south region sales uh listening your sales table right so it goes and checks here and then the it and it sends back the up-to-date information to your report okay so the real time access is not possible in the case of import mode because um, you need to refresh your data to keep your report file up to date okay but you cannot say re what do you mean by real time real time near real time what is real time and near real time anybody has any idea how about uh, ravi Real, what is real time? What is, um, you know, again, depends on the company, right? Yeah, but in general, real time, in the sense, in, you know, in, in seconds, three seconds, right? For example, a new customer and purchase and, and order it just, you know, uh, in a few seconds back, that one should also look at, you know, you here, sales region. At least, you know, I have another table called region, okay? The region, region or you know let's say customer okay instead of uh, region you know i'll put customer here okay? the new customer you know purchase three minutes three seconds back so what happens when you change anything right it goes and fetch the data directly from your sql server customer table and also the sales uh, table so hence you will get the up-to-date information here in the case of direct mode because it is directly querying the sql server okay but the import mode it depends on the data refresh okay the real time is in, in terms of uh, you know seconds the sorry usually what they write some some cases milliseconds they say milliseconds also or let's assume that in this case three seconds the real time could be right um um near real time near real time could be like um uh, 30 seconds or 40 seconds something like that so three seconds is pretty fast right so if there is a real time uh, you know data refresh that needs to be done then you can use direct query mode that kind of situation also and in the case of um, near real time requirement right so your report even if it shows um, the 30 seconds or 40 seconds back it is fine but in that case you are you know you need to change your data refresh time accordingly okay if you refresh your data on a daily basis you cannot get up to the minute or even the near real time data you cannot get it okay that is the uh, disadvantage of using this one okay uh, so now th these are the limitations with the import mode uh, okay import mode your data will in your report file data will not be up to date to keep your data in your report file up to date, you need to schedule the data refresh, okay? And um, another thing which you need to remember it in the case of import mode. So what happens is there is something called X velocity engine comes into picture. In Power BI, there is something called X velocity. It's a piece of software, okay? So what it does is the X velocity. X velocity is an engine, okay? The X velocity engine. Previously, it is called as VertiPack. Remember the previous uh, version of the uh, engine, the, uh, the Power BI engine, okay, VertiPack. Now it has been renamed as X Velocity Engine. What it does is both of them, only the name got changed. 
the functionality remains in the x velocity engine what it is when whenever you import any data it converts that data it converts the table or data table or data it converts it converts the table or data to columnar data columnar data step one and second step what it does is after it converts your table or data columnar data it compresses the data it uses some uh, compression techniques it, it uses some compression algorithm it compresses your columnar data and then it loads your columnar data compressed data in memory okay load the compressed data compressed data in memory let's assume that uh, your files let's say they have given you an excel file the it is 100 gb the file size okay 100 um, gb or also so you know what happens is uh, in the case of um, import mode it drastically reduces this file size to you know something like uh, 10 gb or so okay uh, by applying some compression technique or algorithms it you know, significantly reduces your it compresses your files the original file size and then it loads into your memory okay loads into your memory or the other simple example is you, know, you have 10 gb file right it compresses it as a 1 gb file okay let's say you have um, 8 gb ram right your 8 gb ram so the original file size is 10 GB. Your RAM size itself 8 GB. Hence, it is not possible, right? So what happens is uh, when it comes to Power BI, it con it compresses your 10 GB file data into 1 GB. You know that you know it has you know it compresses that much uh, less uh, size of your you know original file. Okay. 1 GB and then this 1 GB file will get loaded into memory. Before it compresses, it converts your data into tabular data, into columnar data, and then it compresses the data and then uh, it stores the data in memory. Hence, uh, once it compresses the data and then it loads the data in memory, the compressed data, since the compressed data size is much lesser compared to the original data, it, it doesn't require too much of uh, you know RAM. Okay, hence the performance is pretty faster. So the X velocity engine. So whenever you use import mode behind the scene, the X velocity engine, what it does is it you know it carries out these three steps. First step is it converts your table data into columnar data and then compresses the data and then load the compressed data in memory. Hence the performance is pretty faster. But uh, if the volume of the data are very very huge. Let's say you have 100 million or 500 million records are there in your fact table. So in that case, why to import the data? Because if you import the data, what will happen? The data will get loaded in your Power BI memory and the Power BI desktop memory. So in that case, what will happen is you, you need to have significant storage space available in your laptop or in your uh, desktop. Okay. So in that kind of situation, you can go for direct query mode. Direct query mode is... Um, uh, you know, uh, pretty much uh, this is the best fit, right? If you have huge volume of data, okay. So in that kind of situation, you can use the direct mode. The direct mode, what it does is, <clears throat> in the case of direct mode, it uh, the the data remains in your source system itself. It will not uh, load the data anymore. This is what we discussed when I explained about uh, the SQL Server, how to connect to SQL Server, all the things, right? Okay, so the data remains in your original data source. It, it, it need not to import the data in your Power BI desktop. So each time when you make any queries, right, the Power BI sends that query directly to the source system. This is also I discussed already. It provides the real-time data access. This is another advantage of using direct query mode. So you want to get up to the minute, right? So what are the uh, new day? What are the new customers? They ordered it recently. That one you can get it when you use direct query mode and it enables working with large data sets without importing okay you can work with huge volume of data 
or large data sets using direct mode without importing the data. You are just importing only the metadata into your Power BI desktop. What is metadata? Data about data. Okay. It is not going to load the table data in your Power BI desktop. Instead, it will just load the table structure alone, the table name and the column names plus the relationship. Okay. The relationship uh, you know, between the tables also, it loads that. That's all. It is not going to load the data into your Power BI desktop. Okay, these are the advantages of using direct query mode. Since the direct, in the case of direct query mode, it is not importing the data locally. You don't require, uh, you know, too much of, it doesn't require a storage space in your system, even, you know, desktop or in your laptop, okay? But with the direct query mode, right? The flip side of this one is you have a limited data transmission and modeling capabilities. Okay, you cannot uh, do the extensive data transformation like how you do it in the um, import mode. Another thing is uh, the direct query mode works only with specific um, source system um, or source system applications. For example, you can use direct query mode with Oracle, SQL Server, SAP, SAP ANA, uh, and a list of other things. I'll just share the link. Okay, so only the specific source system or limited uh, these in the applications only you can connect uh, with the direct query mode. For example, in the case of MySQL server, how many of you are aware of MySQL server? The Facebook, uh, you know, when they first um, launched their uh, the app, right? The Facebook app, they were using MySQL server. Now, uh, Oracle, they acquired uh, MySQL server software. You know, it was uh, previously the free version. Now also it is free, but you have enterprise version is also available. Okay, MySQL server you cannot use direct query mode. Okay, so these are the uh, you know limitations with direct query mode, and performance depends on the underlying data source. Okay, if your data source is SQL Server, Oracle, or DBMS, already they would have done a lot of fine tuning from the this database system itself. For example, you have huge volume of data or there in your fact table. Let's say you, know, you have the sales fact or order fact. You have something called order fact table. You have huge volume of data are available in your SQL server or Oracle. What they would have done, they would have created partitions. Okay, they would have used partitions. Instead of storing the 500 um, million records, right, uh, in the table, what they do is they store it, uh, you know, these data into different partition, partition one, partition two, partition three, partition four, partition five and all. So what do you mean by partitions? They break the entire file into, file data into five different partitions. Store this data in, in you know, one um, system, other thing in another system, other thing in other, uh, listen, 100 million, you store it in one system, other 100 million here, other 100 million, other 100 million, other million. So in the case of Hadoop control, right? Um, the data will, you know, you have the distributed storage and uh, parallel computing. So in that case, right, uh, you don't have to worry. It, it takes care of uh, splitting the data and storing the data uh, across the systems in your cluster. It's all taken care of automatically. But in the case of SQL Server, you need to create the partition explicitly. This is the responsibility of the database administrator. So already they did everything, okay? Uh, in this case, the performance will be faster, okay? For example, order fact table, they did not create any partitions. Or they created the partitions, but it requires, you know, additional partitions. Okay. Only after creating additional partitions. But as of now, we have partitions, but, you know, we need to do another sub-partitions also within each partition that has not yet been done. So in that case, obviously, though you are using SQL Server, though the partitions are the performance will not be faster in, in the case of direct mode. That, you know, it doesn't mean when you use um, uh, the direct mode, the performance will be faster in all the cases. It depends on your source system also. So what, uh, let's you know, you have the lookup tables or dimension tables. So for example, you have region dimension table and uh, dim region dimension table and um, let's say you have the date dimension table is also available in your sql server itself so in this case you know this uh, since these table volumes are very less they cache this data in memory they cache this data in memory they will ask you how did you improve your report performance my report performance is very very slow how did you, you can also tell them 
we have suggested the database administrator to cache the files that have a list or a volume of data in the cache and the performance is pretty faster and also we suggested them to create um, partitions they say you no know, partitions are a common thing they would have done it so partitions were there but we requested them you know to create uh, the sub partitions also for example this partition stores only north region south region east region west region okay within the north region quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 the sub partition okay so in that case so if the if you are report uh, listening for reporting uh, requirement something like uh, i want to compare north and all the regions quarter 1 sales so it goes to the north region and you know and it goes only to this specific folder and then it picks up this data quickly right hence the performance is faster okay so we can suggest them you know we suggest them to create the sub partition um already partition but, but by after creating the sub partition the performance was faster and also uh, we have suggested them to cache the data in the sql server database itself hence the performance is pretty faster okay and though you have a sql server a sql server also you need to do some kind of fine tuning everything okay the query also you need to write it in optimal way otherwise the performance will not be faster so in the case of direct mode the data will not be imported in your data in your power bi desktop okay it will still remain in your source system sql server itself whenever um, you know the user applies the um, you know if you make any you know change selections in your slice or in your report for example they want to see north and south region so in that time a query will be sent to the sql server and the you know it will execute that query and then the output of the query will be sent back to your visual but if you are using the um slices um, more frequently you will find some kind of hot spot okay there will be a performance issue okay for that how can i deal with it that we will discuss it as part of performance tuning okay later point in time okay so these are the uh, the advantages and disadvantages of using direct query mode okay the other advantage is here right um you don't need the storage uh, too much of storage space on your system it doesn't require too much of storage in local system okay because the data remains in your sql server only on a need basis your power bi queries the sql server the sql server send the data back to your uh, the requested data it will send back to your power bi desktop hence the performance is faster and it doesn't require storage space in your thing okay uh, next one is the live mode live mode offers real time data access live mode is also similar to your direct query mode on itself okay um, it offers a real time uh, data access uh, because uh, you know you, you here um, you are not importing the data the live mode you are uh, simply um, even in this case right you are uh, importing you are loading only the metadata okay it leverages the processing power and scale of the external data source okay let's say uh, you, we have something called ssas sql server analytics service sql server analytics service this is software okay so here you can create cube bundle what is cube what is cube it's a multi dimensional one So multi-dimensional one, and um, so to say it right, with once you create the cube, you can do slice and dicing. You can do slicing and dicing. Okay, now the next question is, what is slicing and dicing? So let's say you have the data, right? It's something like right. Um, you have the data, your cube. so cube i i guess all of you played cube during school time right our parents would have bought cube you rotate the cube right so you have the cube uh, something like so let's you know you have something like you know region it's a multi dimensional one the cube is multi dimensional one you have region and then you have something like um uh, q1 q2 q3 this is another dimension right quarter one quarter is one dimension region is another dimension okay likewise you can have you know any number of dimensions what will happen is the slicing is i want to slice only you know certain portion of the data not the entire data i want to take only the subset of the data for example in the north region you have north region 
quarter one so it's a north region quarter one it's a north region in quarter one what is it so you are you want to narrow down your search right out of the entire data you want to view only the north data this is called slicing okay you want to view only the subset of the data only the north data because your data you know you know you have like you know 500 million records are there pouring 500 million records you know uh, requires a lot of resources it requires a lot of memory uh, it knows too much of IO, everything okay so what will happen and, and and that is one thing another thing your reporting requirement you want to view only the north region and uh, q1 what is the total sales right so the you did slicing you want to uh, view only the quarter one you know performance on the north region so in the north region let's say you know you have uh, 5 million records are there but uh, out of the 5 million in quarter one if you see it just you know maybe right 1 million records will be there so in the north region quarter one just 1 million records will be there you have subsetted the data that is called slicing within this 1 million data you are doing uh, the multi dimension analysis okay so other uh, analysis like you know north um, in the north region quarter one and uh, quarter one uh, sales person wise you know sales person, or district manager performance you want to see it right so this is called slicing i think you you, you just uh, uh, subset the data and in the, in the subset of data you do further uh, you know analysis okay you are doing multiple analysis right multi dimension analysis that is called slicing and dicing what they do is, you know, they identify all the dimensions that are required to perform the, you know, the analysis. For example, you have the region dimension, you have date dimension, you have store dimension, and you have employees dimension, and you have the category dimension, subcategory dimension, product dimension, in the case of Snowflake schema, and uh, you have um, brand dimension, right, separate dimension brand and uh, some cases, you know, they use the price dimension, okay, separate dimension for price, your multiple dimensions will be there. So, you know, but your measures are stored in a fact table, right, so what will happen is in that case, all this in the case of cube, right, the dimension measures will be stored, okay, so that you can perform multi-dimensional, if you want to see the sales breakdown by north region, that is possible, if you want to perform the uh, sales performance by stores that is why you have a store dimension available and you want you have a date dimension you want to compare the sales um, uh, let's say you want to see the sales breakdown by year by brand by region by quarter so these are the different dimensions you know all the dimensions you can do so yes a cs software using which you can create cube with cube we can do multi-dimensional is any of you don't have to uh, be familiar with ssas but if you know SSAS, it is really good, okay? So, SSAS, but uh, you cannot learn everything, right? So, at least you, you have some idea about what is SSAS. In the interview, it tells them SSAS stands for SQL Server Analytics Service, using which we can create the, uh, it's a Microsoft product, using which um, the cubes can be created. Even the cubes, they can cache it in memory. They cache it in memory, okay? So instead of, um, you know, reading the data from the disk, see, always remember, guys, you take any application, reading the data from the disk is uh, time-consuming uh, process. Instead, if the data is available in memory, the performance will be faster. The cube also ends, they cache it in memory. Okay, so SSAS, see, in the case of live mode, it supports SSAS software. And then um, SSAS itself, we have something like table or, and SSAS itself, you have something called um, uh, the multi-dimensional, nothing but the cube, and uh, Power BI services. Live mode is possible only, um, you know, these three sources. You cannot use any other mode. I told you live mode is also somewhat like your direct query mode, but the limitation with live mode is you can work only with these three sources, SSAS data, table or data, SSAS, multidimensional data, and Power BI service, that's all. You cannot use SQL Server and all using live mode. If you want to connect to SQL Server, then you need to use either, uh, say you need to use the direct query mode if the volume of data are too huge, okay? And the next one, uh, what is the next, um, this is one of the disadvantages with uh, live mode, okay? 
And the other advantage is, right, it, it offers the real-time data access and the performance is pretty faster. And like, um, right, in the case of live mode, the data transfer and modeling capabilities are very, very limited. You cannot perform data transformation. In the previous version of the Power BI desktop, the Power Query itself disabled. Once you load the data in live mode, the Power Query editor will get, you know, that itself will get disabled because you cannot perform any data transformation. But the latest version, you can uh, perform the data transformation. The Power Query editor is visible. But when you click on the Power Query editor, what will happen is it will ask you, it will prompt you, you know, so with the message saying that you want to switch from live mode to the, the direct query mode. Okay, if you switch from uh, the um, live to direct mode, then you can perform data transformation. Even in the case of direct query mode, there are limitations. What are the limitations? You cannot perform. Yeah, I should have discussed about this here, right? The other dessert, yeah, already discussed, yeah, limited data transformation. You cannot perform complex data transformation in the case of uh, direct query mode. We have seen, right, if I use order by in a query, it is not working. If I merge the data, uh, in Power Query, it is not working, right? In the case of direct query mode. So you have a uh, limited data transmission capabilities available in both the direct query mode as well as the live mode. And uh, in the case of live mode, the data transmission, uh, you, you know, very, very limited. If you want to perform data limits, you have to switch to direct mode or you need to switch to the import mode. Then that one defeats the purpose, right? If you wanted to view the data in real time, and also other thing is that you cannot mix up uh, other data with the live data, okay? You cannot do that, okay? But in the latest version, that is possible, okay? And it requires an external data source like uh, analyst service, everything, right? You cannot work with uh, other data sets with the live mode, okay? The next one is the dual mode. Dual mode, um, is a very interesting topic okay so the dual mode it offers uh both the rights of say yeah these are the you know use cases look here you have something called dual mode dual is also called the composite mode it combines both import as well as the direct query modes which one dual dual combines import and direct what do you mean by combining import and direct query mode? for example i have loaded one excel file that is import, right? To load an Excel file, you have only one option, direct the only one connectivity mode, only one storage mode. That is nothing but import. There is nothing called direct query mode for your Excel. Okay, you import an Excel file and you have a table that is available in SQL Server. The volume of the table is very, very huge. Hence, you have used the direct query mode to you know load only the metadata of your, let's say, you know, order fact table into your Power BI desktop. And along with that, you have the customer table uh, that you have imported from your Excel file. So you have imported the customer table and the, you know, from your Excel file and the order fact table you imported from your SQL server. Uh, sorry, your order table, you have used the order fact table, you use the direct connectivity mode, right? So that is possible. Okay, that is not uh, what about the dual mode. Okay, so the, it allows you, the dual mode allows you to import some data and directly query other data source. Okay, uh, and uh, performance may vary based on the mix of imported and queried data. So what it tells is, right, I'll just give you one example so that you can understand very clearly about this one. So in the case of dual mode, uh, it combines import and direct query mode. So what does that mean? For example, you have the um, sales fact table. You have, you know, huge volume of data, 500 million records are there. And right, so, and uh, you have a table called um, location dimension table. Location dimension, right? Or, you know, let's say region dimension, instead of saying that region dimension. So maximum you have eight regions, for example, eight or 10 regions are there. Fine, only maximum 10 regions are there, 10 records are there here, okay? And uh, since this table contains huge volume of data, obviously you may have, you have to use direct query mode. 
right? You have to use dead query mode. So the, your management wants to see the breakdown of uh, the sales or the revenue by region. They want to in, they want you to create a report. In that case, you know, even if this table is uh, going to be in direct query mode, it will be good, right? If both the tables are available in your SQL Server, it will be good. Direct query mode. And the other scenario, there is another report wherein they want to display only the aggregated data, okay? So here they want to see the sales breakdown by region uh, in, in the, at the transaction level, okay? Last week, entire transaction, uh, I want to see it in each region. So in that case, you need to access this table, you need to combine this table with the region dimension table. Okay, but this table is available in SQL Server. You know, this table data are not loaded in my Power BI desktop because we have used the direct query mode. Okay, and uh, there is another requirement. They want you to give the aggregated or summarized data. So there is another table called sales fact so, or sales aggregated fact table. You know, this table have weekly aggregated data in it. Okay, every week what you do is you take the data from here and weekly data you will aggregate it, summarize it, use some um, sum of uh, sales, okay, and, and you aggregate the data and then you store it in a weekly, you know, sales aggregate fact table. This is also a factor, but this table will not undergo changes more frequently. Every once in a week only you are updating this table. Hence, we have used the import mode, okay. This table also available here, but what we did, we imported it. So every week, what we have to do is we need to, uh, you know, let's you know this SQL server, okay, in the SQL server, you know, this table is there, okay. So the sales fact table, what we did, we imported it once and then we schedule the data refresh. What happens, so you know, every once in a week, every Saturday, it does the aggregation your job and then it loaded here. Since this table is less frequently accessed. We have imported the data. Let's assume that way because your management want to see the uh, sales breakdown um, with the aggregated data by region. And also they want to see the sales performance um, at the transaction level by region. Okay. So in that case, two reports needs to be created. So to create one report, you need to join these two tables. To create another report, you need to join these two tables. Okay. So, but when you join this table with this table, let's assume that this, in a, this is in a direct query mode, what will happen? So to see the aggregated, the, the sales aggregated data by region, every time it has to go to the SQL server and then it has to get joined with this table. If this table isn't, the region dimension table is in direct query mode. Okay. The uh, okay, if you use the import mode, what will happen is this is also an import. The sales aggregated fact table is also an import, and uh, the region dimension is also an import mode. Both of them are locally available, hence the performance is pretty faster. But to create this report, right, you need to join the region dimension table with this uh, sales fact table. But this is in direct query mode, this is an import mode. The number one issue is this region dimension may not have the up-to-date information in it. See, I told you the region dimension table is less frequently uh, undergoing, under, you know, less frequent uh, changes undergoing table in this one. It undergoes less frequent changes, the region dimension table. That doesn't mean they're not going to add, you know, regions, okay? They may add some additional regions also, okay? So, but uh, not all the time this is going to be up-to-date. Right? That is one issue if you join this table with this table because this is imported. Uh, we have, let's say we have imported this table here, okay? And hence it will not, um, it will not, uh, con you know, it will not contain the up-to-date information, okay? And uh, the sales fact table, when you try to come in this, you know, it has to, you know, query the in-memory data and then it has to go to the SQL server and then join these data. It's a time-consuming process. The challenge is, right, the region table should behave both the direct as well as the import query mode. So that is when the dwell mode comes into picture. So once you enable this, you know, the region dimension table in dwell mode, 
what happens is whenever you join these two tables, because this table is a direct query mode, whenever you join this table with this table, it will get switched to direct query mode automatically. And whenever you join this table with this um, sales aggregate back table, it will get switched to import mode automatically. The automatic switching is possible from one storage mode to another storage mode. Okay, it depends on the table. So for this kind of scenario, you can go for dual storage mode. There are a couple of other scenarios. Uh, so, you know, so what we'll do is we will discuss it in the next uh, weekend in detail. We have, uh, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, almost four to five use cases are there. We'll discuss it in the upcoming, it's a very interesting one. Okay. In the meanwhile, you watch this video. Okay. And the next weekend, we'll continue with that one. Okay. So next weekend, most likely, right, um, we will start giving you the assignments, start work on the assignments. And then, review. but only thing is, I will just check uh, the database related issue. Okay, why, you know, the the credentials, you know, uh, so why my authenticator app, um, uh, the number, whatever generated there is not in sync with the website thing, right? The Power App site um, number. I'll just check and I'll come back to you. And also, you can watch my previous batch video about the database, how to connect database, right? And uh, you can you will get to know, right? Uh, so even in the case of database, you can use both the direct and import mode. That is also possible there. 